Hi there, Grey Twiles. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is going to be a little bit different to the format of my other videos, uh, just because this video is not me teaching you any new content, but rather me just working through um, ways in which you can best prepare for your exams. Um, the way I've set this lesson out is I'm going to be looking at one, all that you need to know for the exam, like what papers cover which topics and for how many marks. And then we're going to move to really what you can do before your exam to make sure that you prepare well, and then what you can do during the exams to make sure that you don't lose any marks, and then what you can do after your exam to make sure that any mistakes that you have made, that they don't get repeated. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so like I said, this is exam tips for the June exams. Let's first have a look at what you can expect from the papers. Okay, in paper one, the topics that are going to be covered is going to be finance, data handling, and probability. And for June, this question paper is going to be out of 100. At the end of the year, the question papers are out of 150. But because this is still the mid-year and you haven't covered all the content yet, it is only 100 marks. So you're going to be tested on all the finance, data handling, and probability content that your teacher has already covered this year in this paper. Okay, so uh, the amount of marks that they can be asking for each that they must be asking for each topic is the first one finance must be 60 um, 60 marks or plus minus five marks so that can be either 55 it can range from anywhere from 55 to 65 marks for finance and then for data handling it can range anywhere from 30 to 40 marks and then probability five marks so essentially that with these percentages um, are actually equating to the amount of marks going to be asked for these topics because this paper is out of 100. Right, paper 2's topics. This is also out of 100. Uh, maps and plans is between 35 and 45 marks and then measurement will go from 50 to 60 marks and then probability 5 marks. Okay, now I want you to have a look at these and make sure that the time that you're investing for the studies, that you are also sort of gauging your time according to these, um, these mark allocations. So majority of the marks in paper one goes to finance. So majority of your study time for math literacy must go to finance. Okay, so I would also, I always tell my students, whatever is the section that counts the most marks, do the most preparation for those sections so that you can make sure that you score all the marks for those sections. Okay, so that's basically what's going to be covered in paper one and paper two. Now let's look at how you can prepare for your exams before you actually write your paper, right? So the first thing that I would advise you to do is to divide your notes into topics. Make sure that everything that has to do with measurement, you have grouped together. Everything that has to do with data handling, you have grouped together. This way, your brain can know when it's this section that's being asked, your brain will automatically then think of all the calculations that is associated with that section. Uh, because what happens is that very often, you I have students who um, do wrong calculation, the right calculations, but for the wrong topic, so then, you know, they end up losing marks because that wasn't what they were actually supposed to do in that specific topic. OK, so if I was you, I would divide everything into the right topics first. Then when you before you actually start studying a specific topic, make sure you familiarize yourself with the definitions of the words and make sure that you understand the definitions. So if you are doing measurement, make sure you understand what does perimeter mean? What does area mean? What does volume mean? What is units? What is centimeters? Make sure that all these definitions you actually understand and know. Where can you find these definitions? One, you can either find it in your textbook, in your notes from class, or you can just find it in the glossary section of your textbook, which is right at the back um, at with your um, with whatever references and whatever else is at the back of your textbook. Okay, so that's... The, the, that's the next thing that I would do. And then work through examples and do calculations. 
So I would say as much calculations as you can do, do them. Look at past question papers, look at the examples that I do in the videos, look at the test questions that your teacher asks, work through as many examples as you possibly can per topic. Okay, because your brain actually only remembers how to do the work when you are actually doing the calculations yourself. So always look at the examples, read the questions, try and answer them yourself first. Then you look through what the correct answer actually is. That way you can also identify where you are making mistakes. Okay, excuse me, where you are making mistakes and so that you can actually make sure that in an exam paper you don't make those mistakes. But do not just read calculations because I can promise you you're not going to know how to do the calculations then in an exam even if you fully understood something a video from start to finish but if you didn't physically do any calculations then none of that is going to matter because then you're not going to remember what actually was done okay so this is my little couple of tips that I would give you before you write a mathematical literacy exam now tips for writing tips for during the exam so once you've received your question paper what is it that you should do so the first thing is, and this is obviously every teacher has ever told you, is to read the instructions carefully. Okay, now I've given you a sort of an extract of possible instructions that they can give you. I've taken this from a past paper. And if you have a look here, most of them are self-explanatory, but there are a couple that I want to just sort of look into so that you understand what these instructions actually mean. So the first one is, uh, the first one I want to look at is that diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale unless stated otherwise. Now, if you have a diagram, I would say don't look at the diagram and base your calculations on what you see. Look at the diagram and base your calculations on what is given. Because sometimes you will see, um, you know, two sides will look the same with your eye. But then in the instructions, it will say that the one side is 15 centimeters and the other side is 15.5 centimeters. But with your eye, they look exactly the same. You have to base your calculations on the information that's given and not necessarily on what you see. So that's what it means when they say diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale and how you can apply it when you're answering the questions. Then the other one, the other instruction is number five that I wanted to look at because uh, all others are sort of fairly straightforward. Round off all final answers according to the context you use unless stated otherwise. Now the context means what is the story of the question? If the story of the question is working with money, then you will round off to two decimal places, including the cents. If the question is has got or refers to human beings, then you won't say 4,000.25 human beings because you don't get a 0.25 human being. You only get whole numbers as human beings. So if you know that this the, that your answers are people, then you would round that to a whole person. Okay, so that's what it means when I say round off to the context, what they mean by saying round off to the context of the question. Now, I have an entire video on mastering rounding off in an exam. I would really encourage you to go through that video before you um, write your exam. I will link it in the description box below. Okay, then it says indicate units of measurement where applicable. Now, grade 12 is just get in the habit of whatever your answer is, write what the answer is. If it's money, write rands, dollars. If it's um, units, measurement units, then write centimeters, meters at the end of your answer. If it's people, if it's boats, if it's children, if it's, you know, cities, you know, make sure that every single answer, just write next to it what this answer actually is. Okay, so that you, so that the teacher knows that you know what it is that you are calculating and that you don't lose marks for any units not included. Then um, start each question on a new page. This is instruction number seven. This just simply means that if you finish your last question, even if you finish it at the top of, of the page. So let's say question one has 10 questions and you finish 1.10 at the start of the next, of the, of the one page. Then at the back of that page, you will then start question two. Okay, this allows the marker to actually make any comments or add up the totals of your question one. And so that if maybe one teacher is marking question one and the other teacher is marking question two, it's easy for you to know where the one stops and where the other one ends. Okay, then show all calculators clearly and then write neatly and legibly. Obviously, these are sort of all 
important. Okay, so make sure that you read through the instructions and highlight some of the instructions that maybe is unusual that you don't see in every question paper so that you can remember to apply them. Okay, another thing you can do, a couple of more things you can do during the exams is one, make sure your name is on your answer sheets and answer book. Now, I know this is so obvious, grade 12, but you won't believe how many people have lost marks because they don't write their names on the answer sheet. And let's say this, a teacher picks up a stack of papers and falls or something, and then the answer sheets sort of come loose from the answer book. And then they don't know whose answer sheet goes for who because there's no name on it. Okay, so please make sure you write your name on everything. Also, attach your answer sheet with a stapler to your actual answer book. So... If the question paper came with like a X and Y axis where you had to draw actual graph on it, attach that to the question paper that you're giving in your written answers to make sure that it actually gets to the marker in one place. Now, in the June exams, your teachers still mark it, but in the final exams, you don't know who's going to mark your question paper. So make sure that everything is in order so that you don't lose marks because you were reckless or careless. Okay, um, then write down your measurement conversions in pencil on your question paper for paper two. So when you get to the measurement section, you will notice that in my conversions video, I give you clear, easy steps to just write down and how to do conversions between units very easily. I always tell my students at the start of the measurement, don't even read the questions, just write that down on your question paper so that whatever questions ask, you can just use this tool and it will actually give you the exact answer. Okay, that video I will also link in the description box below. Then, on to the questions you are most confident in first. Now, I can't emphasize how important this is. You know what happens is if you find a section that you really struggle with. So a lot of people struggle with um, measurement, okay? Now, measurement is the first question in the paper and you're taking your time and you're struggling and you're struggling. Then the other sections of the paper that you might be confident in, you leave for last. And then when the teacher says, oh, there's 20 minutes left or there's 15 minutes left, now you have to rush the work that you actually know and increase your chance of making mistakes. So I say, Look at a question paper, look at the sections that you find you are most confident in and do those questions first. Just make sure that you leave enough space for your answers for your other questions. But it is perfectly fine if you are happy to start with question three rather than starting with question one, do it. Because that way you can at least slowly and, and confidently move through the sections that you do know and make sure that you get all those marks. Okay, then lastly for the literacy question, Answer in full sentences and reread if it makes sense. Now, what do I mean by the literacy uh, questions? Now, you know that this is mathematical literacy. The mathematical aspect is all the calculations, but the literacy is the interpretation and making sure that you understand what it is that you are calculating. So, if they ask you for questions like, do you think that this person should do this or that? and state why, then you will say, yes, I do think that this person should do this, and this is the reason why. Full sentences, start with a capital letter, end with a full stop, making sure that you are answering your questions as clear as possible. Okay, then what do you do after the exam? Now, a lot of students, they're done writing and they think, okay, now I'm finished, All right? But after the exam, there's also a couple of important things that you have to do. The first one is, if there's something that you really struggled with in the paper, try and find out more from your teacher. Like ask her when you guys go through the paper, ma'am, I wasn't sure what is this, what this is what I did. I don't think this was right. Can you please guide me so that you actually can familiarize yourself with the content that you actually struggled with. Okay. And that you won't sort of struggle with it in future papers. Then the next one says, jot down the topics you felt the least confident in and be sure to study this better for the mock exam. So give this more attention, these sections that you struggled with and that you were less confident in, in your preparation for your next one. Okay, so I'm sorry if you are hearing um, a buzzing in the background. Someone has just decided that they're going to cut the grass of my complex. So... I do apologize. I will see in the editing process if I can actually take the buzzing out. Anyway, but I'm going to move on. Then the next one is, if it is a good paper, feel good about yourself that you made the effort to prepare well. Okay, so it's also good to give yourself a tap on the back and be like, 
I did well because I really put in the effort. I went through all the examples. I followed uh, Lady Lou's uh, guidance on what it is that I need to do. And I did it well. And now I can be proud of myself. Okay? Give yourself a pat on the back when you're actually doing something well so that you can continue that behavior. Okay? Last thing I want to look at before I end this video is really how to use my channel to help you study. Now, I have very few people know that I have organized the videos on my channel per topic for you, okay? And it really is a matter of going to the playlist and finding it. So my channel is ordered per topic. Just navigate to the playlist and select the topic that you would like. So on my page, you will just go to, you'll see you will have these selections when you actually come to my channel and you click on playlists. When you click on playlists, you'll get this window, right? This window over here. And if you have a look here, this playlist has got all the data handling videos that I've made. And in this playlist, it's got all the finance videos. So when you are studying a specific topic, you literally can just go to the playlist and navigate to the actual topic that you want to um, actually study. Okay. Then again, I want to remind you, make notes, but more importantly, do the examples from my videos before viewing the answer. So you work through it and then you look at how I've done it and see if you've made any mistakes. This way you again identify your mistakes before you are actually uh, writing it so that when it actually comes to you writing exams, you make fewer mistakes. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful, Great Wilds. All right, I'll see you. Bye. All right, so Great Wilds, I hope that you found this video helpful. I really hope that this is... A video that can really help you properly prepare for your examinations. I wish you guys all the best. Um, I really hope that you guys nail it. Um, yeah, if you have, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please add it in the comment section below. You will see I really do try and make time to answer your questions. And yeah, I will then see you in the next video. Bye guys!